Hey there, you see me? You hear me? Yes, David. Uh, yeah, John Prine uh, um, passed away yesterday. Great songwriter. Um, somebody posted on Facebook. I, I'm not going. I'm not going to play anything by him because I don't want to get a takedown notice. Or, uh, but uh, I'm trying to think of who. What was the? It's a Bonnie Raitt um, cover of one of his songs. Uh, probably his most known song. Um, what was that? Do you know that, David? Uh, what would be that? Uh, hold on, I'll look it up. I know someone, I know who posted it. I know who posted the name of the song. Not, not really, I, I'm, I'm less aware of, of, uh, oh, hey, this is it, Angel from Montgomery. Yeah, so, um, Bonnie Raitt did a cover of, yeah, there it is. Oh, okay, it's right there on the top. So I'm going to put a link. Um, actually, here's a, well, this was just a couple months ago. Wow, that's crazy. So I'm uh, not going to play. Okay. Um, stop this, and I'm going to hit share, and I'm going to, so this is John Prine and, and um, Bonnie Ray doing Angel Montgomery. Oh, in and uh, so a moment of silence for John Prine. All right, so we are going to, uh, and I'm probably going to do more investigation. It's like I really didn't get into Stevie Ray Vaughan until after he passed. I didn't quite get it. I wasn't into blues music very much back then. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to continue with. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue on the subject of core theory and we're gonna do some application today uh where is my paper that i have for this my notebook oh there it is okay so we did a few days ago there's our giant circle of fifths if you want to do a screen cap <laughs> it's like it's like circle of fifths as if written by a caveman. Oh, you saw them live. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I have, I have, here's the thing. Oftentimes there, there are artists that I, that I don't know much about, but my friends that have really good musical taste are into, and he's one of those. And so invariably I will get around to <laughs> devouring the catalog. Uh, but it, I, I, you know, it's funny. And it's not a sad thing. It's a good thing. But, you know, I, I spend so much of my time doing music. I'm playing music all day long, writing, um, recording, things like that. Oftentimes, I like you walk into our house and you won't hear music playing <laughs> generally unless I'm working. Um, and, you know, I so often you walk into other people's house and uh, you hear a lot of uh, a lot of music. Go ahead and get this sheet out. We're going to kind of work from this but you're probably going to want to pull another piece. So this is the second day of chord theory where we wrote a two octave C scale. We numbered it one through 15. We learned the two types of thirds, major third, minor third, which we're going to talk about today. And then we stacked three, three of those on top of each other, three thirds on top of each other. And, and then analyze, what did we get when we did that? C E G B is every other letter. That was a major uh, seventh chord and so on and so forth. We're going to talk more about that. These were the the four types that showed up, and then here were two more that that didn't show up, but were worth mentioning. Okay, and then Kathy is here with us today. I was worried. I was worried that Kathy's husband put her in a timeout because she was spending too much time with me. <laughs> He's like, nope, you can't watch Tom today. You're, that's your punishment. I'm like, okay, um, but it's funny because I don't really have. Uh, uh, um, notifications turned on for much. Just like I said yesterday, I I, I just have it on pretty much turned on for my uh, uh, for my text, you know, and uh, email. My one email account. I have multiple email accounts, of course, like everybody. Uh, but I just have one turned on, and then um, uh, and then I um, uh, have, of course, the phone is on. But um, I, mean, I feel like there's too much compression on this. Yeah, I can turn it up now. Um, and so <laughs> Kathy was texting, you know, messaging me. I messaged, actually, I messaged her first 
through Facebook, through my Facebook page for this channel, and also through Twitter, because we follow each other on Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, and and she, you, you said something, like I said, I don't always check my messages on those uh, accounts. So, I, you know, my son, Alex, he, he, um, uh, he does social media for Voodoo Lab. So if you uh, feel so inclined on Instagram, you can follow Voodoo Lab. I think that's probably their handle, something like that. Maybe Voodoo Lab. Yeah, that's probably it. But you can look it up. And he does the social media for them. And he's really helped them a lot. I mean, he I think they had 4,000 followers on Instagram and now they have like 40,000 or something like that. So that's actually, we were a little worried that he might lose his job through all this. Um, but they, they say, no, they're going to keep him on. So they're still making pedals. Um, and so they make guitar pedals, mainly what they're kind of known for right now is power supplies. So if you have a pedal board and you need a power supply, Voodoo Lab's great. But if you want to follow him, you can do that. If you want to hit the like button. You can do that. People hit the thumbs down button too. You can do that too. <laughs> and you guys are all like, why are they hitting the thumbs down? Well, this is why, because <laughs> I'm not teaching guitar. He just is talking. Um, and then, um, but Alex is, Alex has, so he also does their Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. So he's got his, he's got his notifications turned on. And so like he's sitting at dinner and it's just like message after message, after notification after notification. I'm like, I can't do that. I, I, I can go, sometimes I can go a whole day without getting a single notification. So uh, that's why I don't always get, uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, written a chat the day prior, but now, but yeah. But you're here now, and that's the good thing. Uh, let's see. I have no idea what my name is on there, though. Oh, on on Instagram, yeah, yeah. Oh, everybody can put everybody put your Instagrams up if you want. Oh, you're following me on Instagram, Pepper? Okay. Yeah, my Instagram's pretty boring. Um, I don't post a lot. Usually what happens if there's some kind of major thing happening, like, you know, a record coming out or something, or if it's one of my kids' birthdays or my wife's birthday or anniversary or something like that. So, uh, yeah. And De and David, you're the reason why the, the stream moves fast. You're saying hi to everybody. <laughs> yeah, this, this stream is starting to get to the point where it's moving really fast. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to hold up this paper from the second day of second day of uh, chord theory. Okay, the first day was we just created triads. And if you want to take a screenshot, if you're new, you want to take a screenshot, I would recommend, uh, if you can read my handwriting, uh, copying that in your own handwriting. So A, so you can read it, and B, it's another level of learning. David, was it David? Somebody sent me, you know, memorize to forget and apply to learn. I forget to learn to know or something. I forget what the saying was, but it was spot on. So spot on. I forgot it. <laughs> Apparently I memorized it. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that's the page we're going to reference today. We're going to create seventh chords on the fretboard. So we're actually, uh, we're actually going to do application and we're going to start out. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to play just so you know, what's going to happen. We're going to play these notes on the A string, the fifth string, okay? We're gonna play these notes then with the, so we'll play these notes here, the E starting on the E on the D string. And then we're gonna do with this one. So we're gonna have two notes, which technically is a chord. It'll be third. So we're gonna play the thirds, minor thirds and major thirds. Then we're gonna do the roots again, but this time we're gonna do the fifths. Actually, probably what I'll do is the roots and then the thirds up an octave and we're going to play that um and i um printed up some diagrams let's see how actually i may need to print up a fretboard so i got i got i got to ask you an opinion your opinion here okay here's number 1 which is is that easier to see or is that i think number 1's easier to see right number number 1 number 2 so if I start writing on these, um, number one, I've never seen, a, actually, I've never seen a chord diagram where the strings got thicker, which is kind of cool. So that'll help you know where the bottom, yep, okay. That's what I thought. thought. The, this one is nice because there's more on here, um, but it's it's fainter and smaller. So this is bigger. So if I if I do some writing, we'll, we may do it on this. Also, I'm let me 
see if I can find that um, page because I just bookmarked it. Um, I can send you a link to where I got that, okay? And but where, what folder did I put it in? Now I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> it's like, where is that? Um, so we're, I got to just go to history here. Um, uh, I think it was, yeah, this one. Okay. So here is a link to the page where I got that. Okay. So you can print these up for yourself. Copy. And they just, they just, you can download them as PDFs. Um, although this one, I don't see the long, see, that's the thing. I saw others that had the long fretboard. So I may have to go to a different website for that. But for this one, the one you just saw. Just... Yeah, there's a fourth rule. What, what was the fourth rule? I forget. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, I got to tell you the rules of our drinking game. So <laughs> literally, we got 44 people online right now. 22 of them are just playing the drinking game. They're not even, they don't even play guitar. <laughs> so they don't, they don't even, they can't even spell guitar. Um, so if I touch my face, which we're not supposed to do, and Kathy, you touched your eyeball, and that's not good. Um, if you touch your face, if I touch my face, not you, because <laughs> there'd be some of you going like this. Okay, now you have to take a drink. If I refer to myself in the third person, which I really never do, I only do it because I'm thirsty now. Um, <laughs> so that's a kind of a Pavlovian response. Or if I say I had a band in high school called, uh, and so what was the last one? Oh, if I'm completely oblivious to my tuning, that's right. That happened yesterday. I'm like trying to play a scale and I'm in drop D and I'm like, why is that? That chord doesn't sound right. <laughs> I totally forgot I was in drop D. So that's a fourth one. That one's unlikely to happen. Okay. That one is unlikely to happen. Uh, so, so we have four now. By the end of April, we'll probably be close to 10 different things who will be uh, part of the drinking game. And that was, I forget who's recommendation. Uh, yeah, it was an eye test, AJ. Uh, it was um, the recommendation of, uh, I think, I think it was AJ. I forget who, I think who, uh, forget who said it. Okay. Now, uh, let me see if I can find um, where I saw the long fretboard because I kind of, okay. Yeah. Cause this, that actually, this would actually come in handy. I think that I might have to do it. Let's see. It was was it this one? No, not that one. Uh, history. I need, uh, okay. No, not that one. Dang it. Earlier today. Okay, this one. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to print this up. I, I, I wanted it vertical on the page. The nice thing about this is the frets do get smaller. Uh, but these are horizontal fretboards. Um, oh, and actually, I think they also had a version that was with, with inlays. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So let me let me print this one up too. But this is nice because it does. If it did it, if I did it horizontal, um, if I did it horizontally, then it, I would only be able to fit three of these. So this isn't bad. I mean, you can see that's the nut there. The frets get smaller as we go. So you, if you want, um, I'll send you this one. But I, the, here's one, the same one with inlays. That might be a little bit better. Okay. So, and I only have a black and white printer. Um, I don't like color printers. Um, so let me, let me save this one. Right, is that? Yeah. Um, and then let me share this. PDF with you guys so you can print it up, okay? Want if you want to, you don't have to. You can just draw lines on your guitar. So what we're gonna do? Um, we're going to uh, start out. Oh, okay. You said see sip. So I guess I because I touched my face. To but that was more in. <laughs> That was more saying that's what you were going to do. You were going to touch your face so you could take a drink. Okay. So what we're going to do, um, and I, I get asked all the time, what's the most important thing to, what's the first thing I should learn? Or what's the most important thing uh, to learn? And I'm going to sit back a little bit more like that. Okay. Um, and I always kind of break it up into acoustic guitar players and electric guitar players. 
uh, with acoustic guitar players always say, man, try to have as many grooves as you can because most guitar players will be doing like. They'll do the same groove on every song. It's like, no matter what song you're playing, it almost sounds like the same song because you're grooving the same. So, um, and my, my friend, Walter Rodriguez, he says, uh, strumming is drumming. And so, you know, a drummer wouldn't get much work if he did the same groove on every song. And so you got to think of your right hand as your drummer. You're a drummer. And your left hand is kind of the piano. And um, so to come up with as many grooves as you can. Now, that's for acoustic. For electric, I always say probably the, the most important thing you can work on. Um, and it's one of those things. Uh, see, with strumming, you can always be learning new strumming patterns. But with this thing for the electric, it's just to memorize the fretboard. Um, and that um, that is mainly um, one of those things where once you know it, you know it. You don't have to learn it again. Uh, so that's kind of cool as far as being, you know, some people will say, well, shouldn't I learn scales? Well, yeah, but I think that's obviously going to happen. But if you, you can play scales, but if you don't, don't know what notes you're playing, sometimes that that's a disadvantage. Um, so um, and one of the things I suggest and we're going to apply it right now is that uh, just start with the bottom string and the, the, the bottom two strings. Learn all the notes on the bottom two strings. That way you can play power chords. And know what chords you're playing. I could let me pull up a, a like a a lead sound, um, and then uh, or a rock sound or something, um, and then learn learn. Yeah, so if you know the E string, then you know all the, the power chords up and down the E string. If you know the A string, you know all the power chords up and down the A string, and then if uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, eh. I want something a little more gainy than that. I'll go, oh, come on. There we go. And I got to turn it down because it's going to be loud. Okay. So um, that's that'll work. So if you know all the notes on the bottom string, you know what chord you're playing. And that would apply to bar chords too. So this is an F bar chord because this is an F note. This is a G note, so this is a G major bar chord. This is an A note, so this is A minor bar chord. But it also works for power. We're going to do power chords today um, on the a, on the A string. And then if you know the A string, you know that this is a C chord. This would be B flat, that kind of thing. Um, but the other thing is, once you know the bottom string down here, this low E string, it's the same as this E string. So if this is F, this is F. If this is A, this is A. If this is C, this is C. If this is E flat, this is E flat. And so now, by knowing these two strings, you've actually learned half of your strings. Uh, granted, only only required you to memorize two, but basically you learn you've already learned half just by learning the, the the bottom two strings, so you can play bar chords and power chords. Okay. All right. So uh, right, ah, my nose is okay. Everybody, take a drink. Cheers. All right. So soup. <laughs> Everybody's gonna. Get... So what we want to do now is we want to um, put our first finger. We're just gonna do first finger, and remember the formula for a whole a major scale: whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, I could even put a space in there so that you can see that the the, two, the tetrachord, the whole step, and then another tetrachord. This is. Uh, the same tetrachord too. So uh, we talked about tetrachords the last couple of days. If you watch the, la the last two videos on the circle of fifths, uh, we were making all the major scales in all 12 keys, actually 15 keys ultimately. And uh, we used something called tetrachords to cheat and make it easier. So uh, that's what we talked about yesterday. But but um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to put start here at the third fret on the fifth string. And we're going to go we're going to do every scale tone. So we want, this is C, we want a whole step. So it's, whole step is two frets. So we want, there's D. The scale is, let me just write the scale up. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We're picking C because there's no sharps or flats. We may do something like this uh, where we do that lesson I just held up. And this is, this is the lesson we're going to be applying. So you want to do a screenshot of this, my horrible, horrible penmanship. Um, I'll, here, so you don't have my face in your screenshot. <laughs> You poor, you poor people. <laughs> How many of you actually have a big giant blue dot right here in the middle of your screen? So just stuck there so you don't have to look at my face. You just see my guitar. 
I want a show of hands. <laughs> oh man, my nose itches. Ugh, got to take a drink now. Okay, so we're going to make that scale on, on the A string. And if you're playing electric, you won't have a problem going to the 15th fret, which is where we're going to end up. But actually, I'm probably going to drop it down uh, to, instead of hitting the A here, I'm probably going to use open A. Okay, so here, play this with me. Third fret, and we can just use our finger, first finger for all of this. Third fret. Fifth fret. Seventh fret. Eighth fret is F. Whole step to G. Whole step to A or open, whole step to B. So whole step from A to B is the second fret and then back to C. Okay, double sip. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. C, whole step to D, whole step to E, half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A. Go ahead and stay on this up, go up to 14th fret. If you're on acoustic, you can go like this. And then 15th fret will be C again. But we're going to build chords on this. Okay, so we're going to harmonize this. That's the next thing we're going to do. Now, I, what I can do is, uh, look, that we actually have enough frets on this. So I could write this, what we just did, I can write out. And, okay, I'll use my standard pen. I found my other pen. So I got, this is the number two. So I have a number three, which would be wider, and I have a number one that's narrow, smaller. So, well, this is, this is, wait a minute, which one is this? Oh, this is the three. I don't, I don't want the three. Well, they all look alike. The only difference is the number. Okay. So here's what we just played. A C major scale right there. Okay. Using this. Diagram that I sent the link to this. Uh, it's up there if you look at my. Okay, so there's the third fret on the fifth string, and we just kept going up all the way there. All right, does that make sense? All right, um, I may just go ahead and add to that rather than start a new one, but I could do to start a new one. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go. So now what we're going to do is what was that? Loud thump. Oh, it's the, the pool guys here. Um, so we've got a, a, a major scale here. Um, and then we're going to harmonize. So we're going to play this column now. So we just played this column, although we went all the way to C. Not We didn't stop at B. That's right. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Perfect, Bertie. Oh, you just cut. Okay, Mike or Rick, you've got to cut away. That's good. I, I'm going to kind of, we'll do it both ways. So don't worry. Um, and anything you play way up there, you can always play down. So that's not a problem. Okay. Now we're going to play th this scale here. Okay. But we're going to play the third with it. So we're going to play this column and this column at the same time. So what we played a C major scale. This is for the people that were paying attention in our modes class. What scale are we going to play? with, and we're going to play that scale on the D string. So they're going to be on adjacent strings. What scale are we going to be using? What is it? What, what for bonus, bonus, uh, bonus points, what scale start, uh, is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E? Anyone? Nope. David, that's not right. Uh, nope, Jim. It's all right. If you want to flip back to your um, modes lesson, it would be the first lesson in modes. So that would be on uh, day, day the, those mode lessons start on, I think there's five days of them. And th that starts on uh, the th day 13. Dorian is based on the second. Yep, Phrygian is correct. It's the Phrygian scale, okay? So let's play that one to, by itself first. Uh, so Dennis, you're right. Yep, Harrison, hey Harrison, how you doing buddy? So let's go ahead and play that. We're going to start on the D string. And, you, and I'm just, you, again, you can use your first finger. In fact, we're probably going to use our first finger for this. It makes the most sense. So this will be how we will play this scale when we harmonize it, okay? So we're going to play E, F. 
So second fret, third fret, go to the fifth fret for G, go to the seventh fret for A, okay? Go to the ninth fret for B, we're half, almost there. 10th fret for C, 12th fret for A, and then we, we, we I'm sorry, 12th fret for, for D, sorry, my brain. And then E. I was up late last night doing a session, so I was like, and I got to do more today. I'm like, I, I woke up so groggy. Okay, so let's do that again, sorry. Uh, e, F is a half step, whole step to G, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm, I'll show you what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna combine those two elements. I'm gonna turn off my de delay. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Okay. Um. Isn't that cool? So basically, if, if you were singing a melody that was do, re, mi, and you had someone that could sing higher than you, then they would sing do re mi starting on the do re do. They'd start on the mi, which is be a Phrygian scale. They would be singing a Phrygian, but they wouldn't be thinking they're singing a Phrygian scale. They'd just be thinking, oh, I'm going to sing a third up. Now, remember, we had two kinds of thirds, major thirds and minor thirds. This is a major third. So I'm playing the, and if you want, you can use a pick. Or you can use your fingers. You can use two fingers or a thumb and a finger. You can th I don't care how you, the right hand, we're not really talking about that right now. So however you want to play this, you can play it. I'm going to use a pick. <laughs> you know, I, I, YouTube pays me. I make money from YouTube and I enjoy doing this. I hope you know that. I, I tell you every, you're not taking me away from work. I, I fit it all in. It's all good. <laughs> but I, I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> We're not doing church. I don't know what day is it. What day? Oh, it's Wednesday. See, I have no idea what day it is, and I, I have to be very careful not to like go crazy and work seven days a week. Which I'm so thankful for the work, but it is kind of crazy. So we're going to have two shapes. This second finger to first finger shape. That's a major third, C to E. Okay. And so now what we're going to notice is from this diagram, okay, we're going to play C, E, and then we're going to play D, F. Well, D, F, is that a major or minor? That was minor. So here we can we could even just play the scale, by, harmonize the scale by looking at this column. Major third, minor third, minor third, major, major, minor, minor. Because remember, the one chord and the four chord and the five chord were major. The two chord, the three chord, and the six chord were minor, and the the seventh chord was diminished. Somebody sent me a, a funny thing. What was, who was that? They sent me a funny thing about the diminished seventh chord. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I should, I, I may, if I can find it again, I'll post it on my Facebook page so you guys can all see it. Okay. So we have two shapes. This is the major one. And then when we go up to D, we're going to use our third finger on the D, on the fifth string, and then our first finger on the F, on the D, D string. Okay, you got that? Then we just slide that up two frets because it's minor again, E to G. Let's go back to D, F, and then down to C. So let's say we had a melody that was, that was our melody. Here would be a third, a very simple, basic harmony for it. It's gonna get cooler here in a second. We're gonna do, we're gonna do something else with it. Okay, so let's start that again, C, First, uh, with the second finger, E with the first finger, go up to the D and F, E and G. Then we're going to go back to our second finger. We're, in other words, like I said, I'm keeping my first finger on the D string. So now we have another major third. That's a major third shape, okay? F to A. And then go up to, and there's our four chord, the G to B. And then if we're on electric, we would keep going. Well, we're going to have to keep going because we couldn't play this open. So that's an A on the 12th fret, and I'm at the 10th fret here. I'm gonna write this out so you can do a screenshot of that of this once I'm, I'm done. And then the 14th fret is B and D, and we finish there, or we could do that where the open string D. Okay, so I finished, right here was 14 and 12, 
And then we finished at 15 and 14. Okay. I didn't touch my face. That was just my glasses. Oh, my eyes look tired. I can go backwards too. So if you're up at the 15th and 14th, let's go down to the 14th and 13th. I'm 14th and 12th. That's a minor third. Slide that down two frets, another minor third on the, based on the A, the G major third, F major third, E minor third, D minor third. So here's what that looks like. I'm going to write that. I'm going to. In fact, I've seen it done this way, too. Um, Because see, this gets a little, um, a little hard to see the connectivity of the. So what we're doing are technically we got another another. Um, so we have C E F G A B C D E. Okay. Um, so this is kind of looks like a little bit of a mess. There, the second line down, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect them with another pen. I'm gonna get the, the skinny one out. Is this the skinny one? No, that's the fat one. Okay, I'm gonna get the skinnier one out and I'm gonna do this. And you may have seen things like this. And I don't know if this makes it any easier to see or makes it more, more difficult to see. And my penmanship is awful, but you can see how I connected them like that. But what we're doing is we're, in essence, giving ourselves another layer of learning that's a different learning. This is more of a hands-on visual learning, whereas this was more like math or memorization, right? So what, what we did was we just played C, E, and then D, F. We played the first two notes of each of these seventh chords. Ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to make the whole seventh chord. And so we'll, that's going to unfold on here, too, all right? So look at that mess. But you see how I, I circled around the thirds? So the, And you can see the difference between the major and minor thirds. The minor thirds are a bigger spread. The major thirds are just one, uh, just adjacent frets. But there's a fret between the minor thirds. Yeah, everybody missed Kathy yesterday. OK. So just to, just to play that again, we'll do this. Again, if you create a melody on that string, you would harmonize it. Isn't that cool? So, so, and all we did was use major and minor thirds. All right. Hey, Chris. Charles. Don't fret. <laughs> Puns galore out there. All right, so now we're going to make we're going to make this a little bit almost more usable because that's great for learning about major and minor thirds. It's great about learning how to harmonize. And in fact, you can do that with a singer if you're working with a singer and you're trying to figure out what what a you know, a basic harmony would be. Uh, it's not a particularly interesting harmony, but it, it always works. Um, and th that would be to figure out what the third of your note is in the key. So if, as long as you know the key, then you can just count up two two tones in this. You know, we went C, D, E, D, E, F, and got the thirds. E, F, G, F, A, C, I'm sorry, uh, F, F, G, A, and so on and so forth. Okay. So we're basically harmonizing that. Now what I want to do next is I want to move that third up an octave. Okay. We're still only going to have two shapes because we haven't gotten to the fifth yet. And the and so the one like we've talked about, and I'm going to keep saying it so that you'll eventually memorize this, but the one, four, and five chords are major chords. They're major triads. Um, and they start with a major third. That's what makes them a major chord. That's the the that this very interval is what makes that and a made that C chord a major chord, and this F chord a major chord, and this G a G a major chord. But we did have four chords that were a minor third, okay? So we had the, the the two chord, the three chord, the six chord, and then we have the diminished seventh chord because the diminished part of it is in the fifth. So we haven't even touched on a fifth. So we have, we have, 
we have three major uh, dyads, dyad meaning two notes, and we have four minor dyads. The D, the E, the A, and the B. Ultimately, we're going to have a, a flat five on that one, but, but at this point, we haven't gotten there. So we only have to worry about two shapes, okay? All right, so now we're going to take this E, we're going to take the third, and we're going to go up an octave. Now I'm playing with my thumb and finger. That would be a tough one to strum because you'd have to dump, uh, dumb, you'd have to deaden a lot of strings. Okay, but this is this is eminently more usable, I think, than. Uh, there's a song. Oh wait, those. uses those kind of thirds. Uh, that's a Love Yourself by Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran wrote it. And what's interesting is I got hired to actually replay Ed Sheeran's guitar on that. <laughs> and uh, because Ed's, when they wrote it, they, he just plugged his guitar right into the board. And it was, I, I don't know what kind of guitar it was, but it was humming like crazy. It's like buzz. And uh, so I, I got called to, uh, they sent me the track and I didn't know what it was for. Uh, they just sent me just the guitar track and I heard this buzz and I was like, oh my gosh. And so that's, so basically I listened to it a bunch of times, figured out what he did. And then I, um, uh, yeah, we're going to do the tab on that. Um, oh, not on love yourself, but on, on what I just played. Um, and so, uh, um, I ended up replaying it, trying to, trying to match his vibe. And, um, ultimately they didn't use my guitar on it. I still got paid, but they, they didn't use my guitar. They kept ads. They just ended up uh, using some software that uh, basically like those headphones, the, the noise cancellation, they can, they can use that software to get rid of that kind of buzz. Um, you basically invert the phase of it and get rid of the noise. So they did that so they could keep his performance ultimately. So it was a bummer. It would have been cool because that was like a number one hit. And and I heard it on the radio a million times. I'm like, hey, that's me, but it wasn't me. So, okay. So the intervals, the shapes that we're doing here, I'm at the, put your first finger on the, uh, third fret of the fifth string. And then we're going all the way up to the second string. And so we're going to be on the fifth fret. I'm, I might use my, I like to use my pinky on that, but you can use your third finger if you want. It's up to you. It feels more comfortable. For, I don't know. I kind of like using my pinky and that's the major third. So let's take this. We have, we have three of those, right? C, F and G. C is at the third fret. Take that same shape. Try not to let it get squished like this, okay? You got to keep that fret in between, okay? It's interesting because when we put the third down here, they were adjacent, the major third down here, we, they were adjacent strings or adjacent frets. We didn't have a stretch like this. But when we're playing, when we knock that string up an octave, we actually have a bit of why we have a fret between us now. So we're at the fifth fret or third fret and fifth fret. And then if we go take that shape and just go all the way up to the eighth fret, that's F major. And that's a dyad also, two notes. It's a dyad. Okay. I could call that F3, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to confuse the issue here. We, we could just call it an F chord and then go up two more frets to get to the G. So I'm at the 10th and 12th. So just practice that third fret, eighth fret, 10th fret, eighth fret, and it should sound like that. It should. You might, you might accidentally, like I said, squish your hand together and get a minor, because that's the next one we're gonna do. But we want, want to keep that fret in between. So, third and fifth fret, eighth and tenth fret, tenth and twelfth fret. Okay, those are our three majors. Our minor shape will go up to D minor, and I use my third finger on this. So be the fifth fret on the fifth string and the sixth fret on the second string. Yeah, your pinky. You, yeah, and, and like I said, you can play it this way and this way if you want. You don't need to use your pinky. But I, I like, I like for some reason, it just feels more comfortable to me. Plus, plus we're going to add another note anyway. We're going to add a fifth, and then it's going to, 
you know, then we we'll have to use a pinky. So might as well use it now. That's probably why I use it because I play this chord sometimes, but I play this one more. We're not there yet. Okay, so we're gonna play C and E, third fret and fifth fret. Then we're gonna go up two frets and go to D and F, which is the fifth and sixth. We're staying on the, the same two strings, so we're not changing the strings at all. Yeah, power thirds. I guess you could kind of call them power. I would call this more, that more of a power third. And you could also call this, <laughs> okay, let's go back to the C. You could call this a 10th chord, right? You could call this C3 because it's a C and a third. You could call this C10 because it's a 10th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I, some people will call them tenth chords. I've heard that before. That's not unusual. So C, you could just write. But you know, if you wrote that on a chart, somebody might not know what the heck C ten was. Uh, but um, a, you could call a tenth interval. Basically, technically, a dyad is an interval. Um, and, and interval is a distance between two notes. So you could call that an interval too. I don't really want to kind of bury you in jargon though. Okay, so the major is there, the minor is here. Okay, so that's D and F, and it's sixth fret and six, I'm sorry, fifth fret and sixth fret, and just go up two frets, the whole thing, and that makes your E minor shape. Okay, and then we're going to go up. Uh, to the F, so we're going to be at the first finger and then the pinky, in my case, uh, at the eighth fret and tenth fret. We're still only on those two strings, the fifth string and the second string. Slide that up two frets. Okay? And that would be a tenth fret and twelfth fret. So we have our G and B. Okay? Our third is still there. And then we go up another two frets to the A, but we're going to make it minor. So we're going to get the, the tighter voicing here. And it definitely gets tighter as we get up the neck. So on acoustic, you shouldn't have a problem getting this. It might be a little tough if you have a 12 fret neck, but you probably have a 14 fret neck. And then if you want, go up, slide that up two more frets, and we have B and D. Okay? And then if you want, you can finish it there, or we can do it here. There's the B and D down here, second fret and third fret, which is kind of like a G over B chord, which is a very, very... In the key of C, G over B is far more common than B diminished. A lot of times, if you're going to harmonize a whole scale, you would use G over B as the chord after A minor and before C. Much more likely, much more musical, rather than doing some kind of... Okay. So, um, again... Oh, let me write it out. Then you can take a screenshot. Uh, and I'm probably going to do the same thing where I wrote it... Well, yeah. All right, there's one. Oh, there's something. Uh, shoot, I won't be able to go the full octave on this because I only have 15 frets on this. So we'll just go. We'll we'll go to the B chord. So I'm gonna write the C the C scale on the a, D string or on the A string. F G A B, and then I'm gonna go up the third. So I'm gonna start on E. Play a Phrygian scale on the B string, essentially. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Is this making sense? This is a, so this, here's what I, without without looping them, that's what it looks like. So it's a little bit like heart, well, what, which, what do I play? So now I'm going to take the smaller pen and um, loop them. Nobody's commenting. Are you all there still? We're, we're losing viewers and I'm playing guitar. That's weird. Or maybe that's a sign. Okay. Eh, it's harder as I get up in the tighter frets. Okay. Okay. Now you can probably do a screenshot of this. So what we have the C scale by itself, just right up the A string. And then here we have the C scale on the A string with the Phrygian scale on the D string and creating thirds, major and minors. Okay, yeah, everybody's playing. That's actually a good sign, right, Verdi? Um, and then what I did was I took that third that was on the fourth string and I put it up on the second string, up an octave, and created actually a more interesting, probably more usable 
Now, I do like thirds. Like, sometimes I will. Sorry. Screenshot. Um, I do like thirds. Sometimes I will, like, a, like for in a rock context, I might. Sometimes I'll use thirds in conjunction with fifths or power chords. And um, so there's that. Now we're going to do, we're going to do fifths now. So we're going to do roots and fifths. We're going to skip the third for now. We're going to eventually combine everything. Uh, but right now we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. You guys are doing great. You're following along. Everybody getting this so far? Oh yeah. What happened to my, uh, my young, that's how is that? I don't think he was here yesterday either. Hope everything's okay. Gary, good to see you. Chris. Oh, Chris Remmer. That, okay. You're new. Diane, of course I see. Okay. Just checking. Oh, Abhishek. Abhishek. Abhishek, are you from India? Because I just started watching, we started watching a an Indian last night, which I'm just trying to find something to watch. And, and nothing looked interesting until I clicked on this Indian show. Uh, it was like, it's like, I forget what it's called. Uh, Pramakad or something like that. It's about a guy that's, an, I think, an engineer or something. He ends up going to the rural town. He's from the city. It's it's kind of a drama comedy, dramedy, you could say. Okay. So now, all right. So that's what we just did. And like I said, I really like it. Um, Harrison, if you're still there, I, you know, for writing and stuff, this is, whoops, <laughs> that's the distorted sound. Uh, I really like it. I just love the sound of those. It's really beautiful, especially like with neck pickup. It's great. It's like this wide, it's like a wide major chord. It just, it's hollow sounding. See, if I were to play a full bar chord, so like, listen to this. Right? I played C, D minor, E minor, G, F. But if I played that with full bar chords, it's like, okay, yeah, I've heard that before. You know, that's, that's cool, but it's a little bit on the big full side size this this is like nice and intimate almost and it's actually almost faster to play because it's just you're just using two fingers so uh well uh, on the, uh, the 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 second the thirds i think would work fine with heavy metal um like i said i've done it before on heavy metal uh if you're using like a, a low string like if you've got a seventh string or you're playing like on a baritone the, the brown guitar up there is a baritone it might get too muddy. Thirds are really hard to hear down that low. A um, lot of times what I'll do is uh, I'll do thirds on the bottom string, like this C and E here, and I'll add the third on top. So like for a rock context, for a metal context, I might do something like this. Almost sounds kind of like a Foo Fighter, so it's not really metal sounding. It's more maybe a little more pop, uh, but yeah, that's kind of a cool. I, I, I like doing that, but that's that's another layer. That's another level. Um, I may do a lesson on that actually. Um, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play the C scale again. Let's do that again. I'm going to change my sound back to the the prettier sound for now. Okay, let's play the C scale. So C. We can use our first finger for all of this one. C, D, E, eighth fret is F, 10th fret is G, 12th fret is A, and then 14th fret is 
uh, B and then C, or we can finish off down there if you can't reach that. Okay, so we go. All right. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the third. And this is, if you want, if you are new and you haven't seen this yet, this is what we did a couple days ago, three days ago. Um, this was the second lesson we did on chord theory. I think that, I don't know what day that was, to be honest. Let's see, that was maybe 18 or 19, something like that. Uh, no, see, today's what, 22? 21 and 20 were on circle of fifths. So this this was day 19. Okay, so we we're, we did this column and we did these two columns here, C, the root and third. Okay, and then we did the root and third with the third up an octave. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the root and fifth. We're not going to we're going to not going to do the third right now. We're going to add that later. But we're going to do the root and the fifth. And this one's easier because every one of these, if you if you ran the math, you know, if you got a major and a third and a minor third, then this is a perfect fifth on the outside. Minor third and a major third, still a perfect fifth. Uh, major third and a uh, minor and major perfect fifth. Minor uh, major minor perfect fifth. Major minor perfect fifth. Don't worry, there's no quiz on this. You don't need to know the term perfect fifth at this point. And then minor major is also a perfect fifth, but ah, uh, we have minor minor. That's a diminished fifth. So for the first six scale tones, the fifth is still going to be the same. And we're going to see that right now, except the only one that's going to be different, it's going to be diminished fifth, is going to be when we play the fifth of B in the key of C. Okay? All right. So the way we play a fifth is we just go, we're going to play it on the uh, D string. We're just going to go up two frets. So we're at the third fret fifth string for C, and then put your third finger, which is probably the most likely finger to use there. Or if you want, you could use your pinky, but third finger should be fine. It'll get easier as we get up the fretboard because it gets narrower, the frets get narrower. Um, so there's our fifth, C and G. And then you just go up to D and A, go up a whole step to E and B, up a whole half step to F and C, up a whole step, G and D, whole step to A and B, I'm sorry, A and E, and then there's our diminished, or we go down here, there's our diminished fifth, B and F, and then we resolve to, to C. So all of those were, what, that's called a perfect fifth. And that's a, basically, a, it's a two note power chord. I might, if I'm playing a power chord, I'll go back to my rock sound. I might add another octave, right? So most people, you know, I, it's 50-50. It's you could play that, or you could play, add the pinky and get another C in there. So you have C, G, C. Okay, that's just all power chords. Um, so, uh, but but the in some ways I kind of like the two note power chord, just the root and the fifth. And other times, like it was kind of big in the '90s and in power pop and rock, they would use the octaves and get rid of the fifth. So here's let me let me see. Um, Let me get rid of the fifth. So you can see a little howler sounding, a little more pop, more fun. So if you're going, if you're on the heavy side of rock, you keep the fifth in there. If you're going to go on the lighter side of rock, you might get rid of the fifth and just do octaves, which would be two C's. Um, we're not going to really talk about that other than just me showing you that right now. But I, I'm trying to show you application of the theory that we're learning, how it applies to the guitar. All right. So let me write out that the fifths that we just did. All right. I'm going to turn my guitar into a desk. Find my pen. There's one of them. Which one is this? See, now they all look alike. So I have to look. Okay. So I'm going to write out um, again on my, my diagram here. And I, I sent a link to this. Uh, let me resend this if you guys want to print. Let me see if I have it up. Yeah. Uh, Yep, this is the one. 
copy. Here's boom that. Hey, <laughs> Ozzy. Oh my gosh. Uh, a friend of mine, Andrew Watt, who I wrote, um, we wrote, we've written several songs together. Andrew produced the last Ozzy Osbourne record. Um, and it was really exciting. He's like really into rock, but he's been writing. He's got like five number one hits right now, like with Selena Gomez and different people. And, and then, he, but he's like a total rocker from New York. And he, um, he got the coronavirus and got very sick. Uh, but he's on the back end of that now. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, and you know, it's funny because I, it's, it's like, it seems like to me that the, the virus and we're this, total time capsule here. You watch this 10 years from now, you'd be like, what? But the virus seems to be hitting kind of two groups of people, the poor who tend to be on the obese side. So obesity is definitely one of the factors causing deaths. And the, the uber rich who are traveling and flying all over the world and they're on airplanes and they're doing all this and that and everything. It's like those two groups of people uh, are kind of being equally affected by this, this virus. It's kind of the rest of us in the middle here. We're, we're a little bit better. Uh, Let's see, Robert, you're asking me, why not root on the fifth string and fifth uh, fifth in the six? Oh, on the sixth string? Uh, be, well, it, it, that would technically be like, if I played a C power chord, Robert, I think Robert's, I think Robert's asking me this, why not play that fifth instead of on the fourth string, play it on the sixth string down here. Mm. Um, and that would do that if I was playing bass. But, if I play that, to me, that doesn't sound like a C power chord. It sounds like a, a G sus chord. Like it wants to go. It wants to resolve. So when you when you put the fifth on top and the root on the bottom, it focuses the listener's attention on the root. And that's kind of where you want, you want them to think. But if I did that. It's huge, um, but it's maybe a little bit bigger and more bottom to it. But it doesn't focus the listener. Now um, we're not we're not we're playing. We're, I I chose the fifth string for the uh, root intentionally because of the way these chords are going to lay out on your on your fretboard. You're going to be able to play some even some jazz chords by the end of the day. Um, but if I have enough steam. Um, but uh, it, they don't quite lay as well on the, the sixth string. So that's why I'm using the fifth string. So hopefully that uh, – oh, oh, take care, Dave. Oh, that's all good. I, I appreciate you doing that. So uh, I'm glad you're taking private lessons. Teachers, I appreciate the income. Um, okay, so – because so many teachers aren't able to do that. My wife's a, a, a substitute teacher, and she's, she can't work at all. So she's not getting paid or anything. Um, and that's not a plea. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just what's happening. Okay. So I'm going to write out the fifth. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to write out a C scale and, um, C, D, E, F, four of these. Okay. Now I'm going to add the fifth above it. So that looks like this. Now I'm the next one we do, and in fact, the next two chords we do, I'm not going to use this diagram because it's too messy. But when we're talking about dyads, it's just easier to see dyads in this context. Okay. I'm actually going to use this one for the next two sets of chords we're going to do. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So there's our roots right there. Now I'm going to go up a fifth. So you could just go up two frets on the a, uh, the D string, go up two frets, and there's your fifth of C, and then go up two frets from D and up one string, and there's your A. Go two frets up from E and one string, and there's your fifth of E. Same thing for F, G, A, and then B is going to be one. You go up one fret. Okay. So this kind of looks like before I draw my loops around the, the chords, it kind of looks like that. So almost looks like some kind of scale or something, which it is, it's a C scale. And then on top here, by the way, if we're, if we're going to talk about um, uh, fifths um, or sc what scale this is, that would be a G mixolydian scale. 
talk about modes. I mean, see, there's our G, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step to C, whole step to E, I'm sorry, D, and a whole step to E. And so far, it sounds like a G major scale. And then all of a sudden, we have that half step to F, and we're like, oh, no, it's not G major, it's G mixolydian. It's a dominant chord scale. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the loops. Yeah, so you can be praying for Andrew Watt. Um, uh, he's much better um, than he was, but uh, yeah, he got the he got the virus. And again, this is a little bit of a mess. It's really hard to. <laughs> I mean, good luck looping these things. And I could also put the down here. Okay, so this is this is not great, but you can get the see, you can see the loops. Okay, so there's our those are called we call we can call them dyads. They're, they're two note scales, or or we can also call them intervals. So this was just the C scale. This was the C scale with a third above it, and this is a C scale with a tenth above it. We learned a new concept, and then here's a C scale with a fifth above it. And we get the reason it's called a tenth is again if we count up. So here was a third up. One, ah, <laughs> back on the metal sound. All right. Here we go. If we go up a third, uh, go up three notes. One, two, three. We get the third. Okay. If we go up ten notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We get a tenth. And I just love the sound of those. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a tenth. So we're gonna remember this. Let's play it real quick. We're gonna play it. And okay, we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna go, I'll try to go slowly. I know there's some of you are like, I got it, Tom. But there's some of you that are like really struggling. And I'm, I, you know, that's what's difficult about this venue um, is I can't really see you guys. But someone said we could do like a Zoom type lesson, but that would be difficult because everybody would be playing and talking and it would just be a mess. Uh, and you know how easily I'm distracted, right? You know how easily Tom is distracted. Okay, so we're gonna have third fret and Um, so we have third fret and fifth fret, third fret on the fifth string and fifth fret, I'm sorry, third fret on the fifth string, fifth fret on the second string. And that's our C and E. There's our major third. Then we're going to go up to the D minor one, but this time I want you to play with your second finger. So first and second, you'll see why in a second, so to speak. So first, uh, finger on the fifth fret. And so we got that and we go here. You want to just practice that for a minute just to kind of get used to changing your fingers major minor see that's major that's happy you want to know how i can tell because if i went down a fret with the top note it sounds sad see in this context the minor chord doesn't necessarily sound sad because it, it sounds like where it belongs okay the next one we just take that d minor the, the minor third interval on d or minor tenth we could call it and go up Two frets, just everything moves up two frets. So we're now at the seventh and eighth fret. Yeah, I, I refer to myself in the third person. So you have to take a sip. We'll go over the drinking game rules when I'm done here, when I'm done with this. Then we're back to first and pinky again. Even though it's a little bit, getting, the frets are getting smaller. So we're at the eighth fret and 10th fret. And then 10th fret and 12th fret. So we just take that F and go up two frets. And then we're gonna go, uh, we're going to go to the uh, tenth, or twelfth fret, and the thirteenth fret, and then what I want to do is, yeah, Kathy, Kathy's the admin. Oh, Abhishek, did you say where you were from? Ab, uh, everybody calls you Ab, right? And then we go down. We could either go to the fourteenth uh, and fifteenth, or we could go down to the second and third and get that B to D interval and then finish off here. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. The coffee is, my coffee's already cold. I mean, it's already been an hour, but uh, we, I, I want to try to get two more chords out of you, uh, out of here. Okay. Um, so we're going to, we're going to try this and maybe I'll stop after this chord, but eh, we'll see. Cause we've got, technically we've done, four things so we just got to do two more but they're getting a little bit busier now we're gonna have more things to fingers to place 
So Oh, the power she has. If there's a Kathy, if if there's a um if somebody says something, and sometimes it's just a matter of if you type in um like whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, something that's like all caps, um, weird like that, it may say it needs to be approved. So she's saving me from having to approve things. But then if somebody comes in and like there's a troll and somebody comes in and snarky saying, you know, uh Tom, those glasses make you look like, you know, Buddy Holly's dead uncle's cat or something, then she would probably not approve that. She might. Actually, if somebody actually says that, Kathy, you can go ahead and approve that. Okay. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is, yeah, see, this may take long. We may just stop here and then go to the, do two, not stop here. I'm sorry. We're going to do one more set of chords and then we'll get the seventh chords tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but let's do this one. So now we're going to combine our 10th and we're going to add our fifth in there. Okay, so what I've got is my, and I'm, see, this is where it's going to be hard, is really your right hand. Okay, because you, you could strum it, but you're going to be having, you have to mute a lot of things. And that, the muting thing takes a lot of skill. That's really one of those things you, you get better at the better you are as a guitar player. It's not very natural. Naturally, like if we're, let's say we were in B, you know, it, it's really, if I were to do this chord in B, it would be like, oh man, mistakes, but... Right now it sounds okay because the this note is the same as the open string and this note's the same as the open string. So if you accidentally don't mute anything, you're still going to get a pretty decent sounding C chord. Um, but I would suggest using fingers and you notice how I, I'm holding my pick. I just always do that. So I have my pick in my hand at all times and I can still play with my second finger, but I'm the chords I'm playing are with these three fingers. So my thumb, first finger and third finger are playing the, the fifth string, the fourth string and the second string. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we've had those before, though, Kathy. We get cussing. Well, sometimes some of you guys cuss accidentally. <laughs> I, I do. I did that one time. I just said, I think, H-E double hockey sticks. And uh, I got, like, some kind of warning on the video. And I was like, uh, are you sure this is for public? You know, some advertisers are not going to advertise on this. I'm like, really? Because I said the H word? That seems kind of extreme. Okay. So that shape right there, I'm going to write out. So this is why this is going to take longer, because I'm going to write out each of these as we go. And I'm going to pull out this. Oops. I'm going to pull out this paper. And we're going to have ultimately seven shapes. So I've got enough on this page. I mean, I'm going to have to print up another one for tomorrow. But yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to just do. So these are ultimately going to be major triads. We're going to have the root on the bottom, the third on the second string, and the fifth is going to be on the fourth string. Okay. We could play triads just like this. See. And that would be one, three, five right in a row. But I don't use that very often. I'm trying to give you stuff that's actually usable. Does that make sense? I could give you know, we could strictly apply theory to the guitar and on piano, it makes more sense. But I want I want to kind of merge the, the you know the theory with the usefulness. So I feel like these chords I'm going to show you. And here's here's how it sounds. Here's the the um, uh, the, the 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 chords we're going to do right now. We're going to do we're going to do seven chords. Okay. So check this out. I'm going to add a lot more delay. And I'll show you, like, for example, what I might do. Uh -huh. So I've got a bunch of delay. Hear that? Actually, well, it's fine. A lot of delay. And I, I got a volume pedal on the floor, so I'm going to... tone on my neck pickup.
cool, right? Okay, now I got to turn off that delay because <laughs> it's just going to tick me off. <laughs> Too much delay. But I love doing, I do, a, I do a lot of swells. That's one of the things I like to do. Um, you know, I could even use like an Evo or something, you know, with swells, but uh, we're not going to do that today. And I can't do the, I can't do these chords. Okay. Yeah, it's totally planetarium music. Exactly. Okay. So I've got this sheet out and I'm going to write out the first chord. Um, and I can put fingerings in there too. Okay. Make my desk. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write out all seven of them now, so I don't have to do this. I don't have to put my everything down a bunch of times. Okay. So I'm going to have, um, there's going to be a fret number on the left, so third fret. And I'm not going to cross out strings. Um, I'm going to write out, <clears throat> see, I'm going to write root, fifth, and third. And then I'm going to write one, three, and four. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do for all seven of them. Okay, you see that? If there's not a note on the string, we don't play that string. I'm not going to cross out the strings or put X's or anything. I think that just gets a little too messy. Does this make sense? So, so your first finger is the root on the third fret of the fifth string. Your third finger is the fifth on the what would be the, the fifth fret. Because if that bottom fret is the third fret, then that would be the fifth fret of the fourth string. I know so many numbers. It's just so hard to articulate this. Um, and then the, the pinky will be playing. See the four at the bottom, that's your pinky. The pinky will be playing also at the fifth fret, uh, and that's the third of the chord. There's your major third. That's what makes it made sound like a major, okay? Now remember, the fifth doesn't change very often. So six of these seven chords, are going to have the same fifth thing. So you're still going to you so the six so the six six of these chords are going to have the first finger on the root and the third finger on the very next string up two frets. Okay? So if this finger is on the third fret this is going to be on the fifth. If this finger is on the eighth fret this is going to be on the tenth. If it's on the tenth fret this is going to be on the twelfth. So those two fingers are going to always pretty much be there. And that's kind of why you know people kids always start out with power chords because it's a matter of moving around two fingers in the same in the same position. So when we're playing a major third on top, we're going to be using the pinky. When we're playing a minor third on top, we're going to use our second finger. Okay. And the next chord at the fifth fret is the so this would be oh shoot I got to write the name. So this is C. The next one is going to be D minor. Hopefully I have enough room here. So this is the root fifth and third one three and two and this is D minor. Okay, so let me let me do all of this. So you can see how those are really the two main shapes. The only one that's different is going to be the diminished one. Okay, those are the only two shapes that we're going to have. Oh, that's awesome, Paul. And like I said, these on acoustic guitar, these are also good, but you, they're kind of hard to bang out strumming. They're good for picking the thumb. And this, I personally, this is the easy part. The hard part is the actual playing thumb first and third finger, or you could use your thumb first and second finger if you want. Um, smash the like button. Hey, we got 25 likes. Still, the, the view, the, the count is like below 40. Kind of weird. Must be something going on that I don't know about. Okay. Uh, oh, and that was a fifth fret. See, I forgot to write that. It's the seventh fret. We're going to have the E minor. Root, fifth, third. One, three, two. And this is E minor. And then I'm going to go to the eighth fret. And that's going to be uh, root. You know, almost don't need to write the root fifth thing. And this is going to be F. Yeah, I'm going to stop writing the root fifth thing because I need the room. Uh, and then the fingering, well, I'll keep writing that. And then at the 10th fret is G. And that's going to be one, three, and four again. And then we're at the, oh, and I'll actually, I'll write out the, the diminished one in two different places. Um, and then we're going to have A minor at the 12th fret. One, like that, 12, one, three, and two. And then we have B diminished 
We have one at the 14th fret. And that's going to be, um, how would I play that? I think I would do, yeah. Yeah, I still think I'm going to keep the third finger on the fifth. So I'm going to play it one, three, four, or in at the second position. One, three, four, also V diminished. Okay, so these two are the same. Um, and if you want, you could go, I could go all the way up to the 15th fret with C and do this end on the C. So that way I have, I use up all of these diagrams. One, three, four, like so. All right, get ready to screenshot, okay? I wrote them all out. Um, and then you copy my work and that gives you, like I said, another another type of learning, layers and layers of, of understanding so that you can come to a full understanding of it. Okay, so basically what I did was I wrote out all 12, or all, uh, seven of the chords. The first one, C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. I wrote it in two different ways, one at the 14th fret. Oh, why is there those people? Oh, here, I know people here list. Oh, lost power, interesting. It could be. Um, you know, I need to check and see with it. I mean, in it looks good to me here, but I know it's streamed. It doesn't necessarily look as good. And probably if I could change the resolution of the camera on my iMac, it would uh, probably be a bigger uh, file going through the stream and therefore would make more buffering issues. So I probably, I can't do that. So, okay. Now, um, so those chords, again, as I played them, are um, the the seven chords let's I'll go ahead and teach them to you right now You're, you've got the if you took a picture um, you can you can uh, copy those down later and practice them okay and again we're only playing on three strings so on the, the C chord C major is third fret fifth string uh, fifth fret fourth string with the third finger and the pinky goes on the second string at the fifth fret and you play those three strings and you get a C major chord and so what it is, is this is still, this is C. Uh, even though, like you could play a C triad, C, E, G, this, what we did was C, G, E. It doesn't matter what order they're in, it's still a C triad. Okay, go up two frets. Your first and third finger shouldn't change at all. We take away the pinky and put the second finger down here on the sixth string, also on the second string. So we're still all, all of these chords are only going to be on, are going to be on the same three strings. And you might, in the process of doing this, which is, this is great, actually. Because uh, we're in the key of C, you might actually start to learn the notes on the D string and on the on and on the uh, on the on the B string on the second string. So then you've got five out of the six strings memorized. Okay, I would seriously start to think about because we're we're just applying our theory that you already know. You know a D minor chord is DFA. We learned that in chord theory just a few days ago. And so there's the D and there's the F and there's the A. Okay, then we just take that shape. So first finger, third finger, second finger, we just go up two frets and make E minor. Okay. Yeah, baby Taylor, you should be able to get all, maybe all the way up to the 15th fret. You should be okay on a baby Taylor. Oh, what do I call what you've written down? What, oh, what these? What do I call those? Those are technically triads, major, minor, diminished chords. They're just not the triads in order, one, three, five. We're doing one, five, three. But I just found, find these are more usable music. These are more musical. Okay. Now we're going to go to the 10th fret or 8th fret. And this is our F chord, F major. Here's our F. And then we have the C, which is the fifth. So the power chord is still there. Nothing's changed. And then we're going to, now we go back to the pinky and get that major third. So that's the A right there, F, A, C. 
Um, and and tomorrow we're going to learn, we're going to put down the seventh. So we'll make it a major seventh. Okay, that's the seventh chord. So he says F A C E, face. Remember the F major seventh spelled face. That's it right there. But we're going to get to that tomorrow. I think that's going to be. Uh, and then then when, but once you learn those chords, because then the, technically those are going to be bar chords. Once you learn those, you don't have to bar them, but now you can strum. See, that's the beauty of those chords is you can use a pick on those. Or and you know I could use a pick on these, but it's just I'm good at muting. Okay. And then we take this up. Diane's probably aching for story time. I need a story. Do I have a story? I, I have a story. Ugh, I have a bad story. Okay, now this is the F. We just go up two frets. There's our G chord. There's our five chord. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we Bill Withers passed away. One major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, and then the six chords of minor chord. So we're going to again keep our power chord, first and third finger on the uh, uh, 12th and 14th, and then we're going to go back to our second finger for the third, and that's on the second string, 13th fret. Well, this is a great sounding chord right there. I love the sound of that. It sounds like a charango. Okay, and then we have one more. This is the one where we're going to do the. We actually collapse the fifth. This is a diminished fifth. This is the B minor one. I mean the B diminished one. So in first down here, it's first finger on the second fret, third finger on the third fret, and pinky on the D on the third fret also. Okay, and that would be this one right here. Okay, so these are the fingers down here. These are the fingers on the fretboard. This is the name of it. I was originally writing root uh, fifth third, but that was the same for every chord, so it was redundant. What is Mexican? Charango. I actually played charango a little bit um, for movies and stuff. If I just did it on, there's a movie that's out now, but it's Universal, I think it's Universal Pictures, Bloodshot. But, it, you know, of course, because theaters are closed, they couldn't release it in theaters, so they had to record. I actually played on Bloodshot. Um, but I, I don't remember, you know, what I played on. But if, I haven't seen it. I don't want to pay 20 bucks to watch it. <laughs> so, cheapskate. So that's the last one. And then we finish up with a C again. Is this making sense? And hopefully you'll be able to... We're, we're going to probably go through this again tomorrow. Okay, we're going to do this... We'll go through these chords again tomorrow, and then we're going to go through them because, because we're going to add the seventh to these. And the seventh is going to populate the, the G string, the uh, the third string. We're going to we're going to play the seventh on the G string. So then so then the chord's going to be the bottom's going to be a root. We have a fifth, the seventh and the third. OK, and that's going to sound like this. Isn't that dope? That's what we're doing tomorrow. The the so in this voicing, Lance, the third is always on the top. But when we go to these bar chords, if we play five strings, the top note's going to be the fifth. So we're going to double the fifth. But that's kind of redundant. I, you know, a lot of times I'll play with my hands, even when I'm doing jazz. Like I said, I have my pick ready. So like if I'm playing. You know, that's very efficient. Every note is represented and not duplicated. You know, if I did, um, I could do that too. But then when I go to solo, I have my pick ready.
So, so I have my pick in my hand even when I'm playing chords with my fingers. And the way you can kind of get that down, the way that Tom got that down was uh, I would just walk around the house with a pick in my hand and just keep it like that so I wouldn't drop it. So uh, we, we have a drinking game we're playing. And I'm waiting for the... <laughs> For the, there we go. Charles, you caught it. Jim, everybody caught it. Okay. <laughs> so we're a drinking game. There's four rules now. And, and there's also another game we play. Uh, is Tom wearing pants? Oh, did I just refer to myself in the third person? Or is that the name of the game? That wouldn't be technically calling myself third person. So the four rules are, if I touch my face, we're not supposed to touch our faces right now. Really hard. <laughs> my friend Andrew, he's not on today or he hasn't logged in. He says, yeah, keep, keep keep your fingers out of the holes. And I'm like, well, then why are the whole, all the holes shaped like fingers? <laughs> why did God do that? If he didn't want us to put our fingers in them. So <laughs> anyway, uh, first rule is uh, if I, if I touch my face, you have to take a drink. Second rule is if I refer to myself in the third person, you have to take a, a drink. Um, <laughs> no more rules. Uh, the Third one is uh, if I, dang it. The third one is uh, if I say I had abandoned high school called, whatever I say after that, then you have to take a drink. And then the, the fourth one that we came up with yesterday that was suggested was if I lose track of what tuning I'm in. <laughs> so, cause I picked up my, I picked up my GNL yesterday and it was in drop D and I didn't notice I'm trying to play a chord. And it's like, why does this sound so wrong? I'm like, oh, cause I'm in drop D, I'm an idiot. So everybody, cheers. Yeah, I talked about Tom first. That's right, Kathy. Bring a towel to the lesson. Well, I didn't run here today. Yesterday, I had to run all the way home because I, Beth and I went for a walk. And I thought I was heading north towards home. And we were kind of over by CSUN College. And I was actually heading west away from home. <laughs> so I got on my phone and it, it was like, 40 minutes to the live stream. And I was, it said, according to Google maps said I was 50 minutes from home. So I got, I tried to call up an Uber and I, I uh, signed up for the Uber thing. You know, I Uber all the time and it says two minutes away. Great. So I'm like, okay, I'll just hang out here. Well, now I'm losing time because I'm not moving forward, but I got to stay in one place so you can find me. And then it's like, he says three minutes away, four minutes away five minutes away, eventually got to nine minutes away. And I just said, Oh, forget that. I canceled it. And I ran home about two and a half miles. And I got here with four minutes to spare. So I shaved like 15 minutes off the time. <laughs> uh, but I was like red and just sweating. So, Oh, I touched my face again. Verdi, you are going to be so, where is Verdi? Has Verdi been on at all today? I thought I saw him on earlier. David's gone. I know that. Verdi, where are you? Oh, there you are. Are you okay? <laughs> Verdi, we're trying to get, we're all trying to get Verdi to sm stop smoking because that's also one of those things that makes uh, sur surviving the coronavirus uh, more difficult. And uh, so he says he, he has, he, he chain smokes and he can only go 10 minutes between cigarettes without shaking or feeling withdrawals or something which I totally understand. It's a total addiction thing. It's a chemical addiction. I get that. Uh, we Yesterday, we tried to get him. We should have probably just gone to 11 minutes and then 12. And so I, I took it right to 15. I said, well, today we're going to do 20 minutes between cigarettes. Uh, so that probably scared him off. He's like, yeah, I can't, I can't stand the pressure. So I should have said 11. Then today would be 12 minutes between cigarettes for Verdi. Okay. Uh, so that was, uh, so what we did today, uh, just in review, we learned three days ago, four days ago, we did, uh, we harmonized the, uh, we made seventh chords in the key of C. Basically, every other letter creates a, tri uh, a seventh chord, a triad, and then we added the seventh on top of that. We did the triad the day before. Here's the triads. And then the next day we did this. And uh, basically, we wrote out a two octave C scale just so that we could if we were starting on F, we could go from there. We don't have to count backwards or do anything weird. Um, and then we learned about major and minor thirds. And we basically wrote out these scales, you know, wrote out the C scale and then went up a third from each note and came up with different types of chords. And there were four, diff 
four different chords that we came across in that occurred naturally in a C diatonic scale. And I added two more down here just for fun. So what we did today was, and actually what we ultimately did today was we did the first page, which is just the triads. Because I'm, I'm holding back, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But what we did first was we played the C scale on the bot on the A string, and there's this. That's what this is. Then we harmonized it with thirds, so we played a C scale, and essentially we played an E Phrygian scale. If you learned your modes, we that was an E Phrygian scale. But basically, it's just E to E, no sharps or flats, so it's the same notes as the key of C. Uh, but there, then we I kind of went through lame loops around the, the tones, but that was thirds. And then what I did was I threw the third up an octave and came with a came up with a much more interesting voicing, cl similar voicing that uh, Ed Sheeran used on Love Yourself by Justin Bieber. Okay, and then what we did were fifths, okay? And then what we did was we combined the, this and this. We did the root, the fifth, and the third up an octave, and it looks like this. Hit the like button. Yeah, thank you, Diane. I guarantee I got dislikes here, though. Every day I get dislikes. It's because I talk too much. But I'm not, I can't change that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right. So let's see. Oh, I don't know if I want to share this story. I, Diane's like, share it. Um, no, I see 39 likes over here. So. Yeah, I've got, it says 39 likes. So that's pretty good. And there'll be more by this time tomorrow because a lot of people log in and watch this later. Oh, I hate Charles Logan Squirrel. Uh, so how do you learn how to hold the pick? Did I answer that at all? Um, you know, everybody has a different way of holding picks and I, I will hold it differently for every style of music I'm playing. You know, I mean, even Oud is different. It's played with like a feather uh, or if it's, a, it's like a long skinny pick that you hold it in a different way. Um, but I will, I've been asked many times to talk about picks. We could, we could do a, a live stream on picks or I could maybe do a real video and post it on picks. Um, Gary, what did Gary say that was so funny? We have, oh, we have 37 of, I have 42 likes now. So you guys are liking as we're talking. Uh, I have to read, I don't know what that word is. I had to mute and listen to the meeting about, oh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Gary, I, I I hope I was more, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so don't hit it. Tw oh, don't, if you hit it twice, that's true. It'll turn it off then and you lose the like. But I haven't seen it go down at all. So um, yeah, Bruce, you're right. So it's, two, it's, it's, uh, um, it's 42 right now. Okay. <laughs> I regret that I have one, but one like to give. Ah, uh, Gary. Gary, you must be a dad. That's a dad joke right there. Okay, story time. I'm sorry. All right. All right. I'll tell you the story. It's, it's, I was, I, you know, to be honest, my insecurity, and I, I argue that most guitar players are insecure. Uh, most guitar players, when there's another guitar player in the room, they start getting really kind of like stressed and, you know, insecure and like, is that guy better than me? And, you know, I've come to peace with that. <laughs> and I have a secret for that. I'll tell you another time. Uh, but, um, I think having a career in music helps to have peace with that in a lot of ways. But I've even said just recently, I said something about when you go into guitar player or guitar center magazine and, uh, a guitar center, not guitar center magazine. When you go into guitar center and you hear some amazing like licks and you like look around the corner at some 13 year old kid playing some crazy Eddie Van Halen stuff or something. And you're like, Oh man, that kid's better than me. And it's like, no, he's not. But it's just like, that's immediately where a guitar player's drummers and bass players are not like that keyboard players are definitely not like that guitar players are very competitive uh they will actually under you know sometimes undercut and you know other guitar players i mean i've seen it happen so it's happened to me um but bass players just don't seem to care uh bass players you know for for bass player it's really all about feel and um uh you know time if they have good time they're a good bass if they got a good feel and they got good time Everybody will use them. Uh, with drummers, same thing. It's like if you got a good feel, good time, uh, you can be an amazing drummer. I, I'm sure the drummers that are really like crazy busy drummers, they're they're um, they're not so insecure. I mean, they may get more insecure because they're comparing themselves to other drummers who are also really really like flashy and stuff like that. So, um, 
and you know, I don't know that when I was young, I was trying to be flashy. I was just trying to learn how to play guitar, but I really, really in junior high, it's the worst. I really wanted to be popular and I wasn't. Um, I had moved around a lot. And so by the time I got to Indianapolis in fifth grade, halfway through the fifth grade year, um, and I'd come from a school where I was really popular. And I think it's a real blessing that I wasn't popular in junior high and high school because I probably would have gotten into a lot more trouble and maybe gotten into some things I shouldn't have gotten into. So for not being popular and feeling like an outsider my entire junior high life, I, it kind of threw me into the guitar. Um, that you know, you'll find that with two people that are really good at sports or really good at instruments or other things that oftentimes it was something that happened when they were younger and there was nothing, one particular thing that happened. It was just the fact that I just couldn't get in the in crowd. I just couldn't. And, and so there's that thing that literally you're saying in your head, I'll show them. You're saying that in your head. I'll show them when I'm famous, you know. Or when I'm, you know, a YouTube star or when I'm playing guitar for Justin Bieber or writing songs or TV or whatever, you know, that it is funny because when you're when you're 13 years old, you know, that literally it's like, OK. And so I'm sitting at home practicing, you know, five, six, seven hours a day. I'll show them. So so I had a when I was in ninth grade, I had a kind of a oh, yeah. Oh, that, and I can't tell the story of my last day of seventh grade. So I. I can't tell that one. That one's just too humiliating. And I don't want that forever on YouTube, although my grandkids could watch it and go, oh, grandpa. But um, but this was also pretty darn humiliating. Oh, it was about equally humiliating. Uh, so I had the brilliant idea that I should start a band and only have popular kids in the band, <laughs> right? So and in Indiana, growing up in Indiana, you were guaranteed popular if you were on the basketball team. So I found out that, you know, some of the kids that are on the basketball team also played in band. Um, there was a guy named David who played trombone. And uh, there was a guy named Chris who was a star on the basketball team. He also played guitar. Uh, there was a guy named Rick that played piano. And there was a, another kid named David that played drums. Um, and then we had, and I, and then I found uh, the high school, my, my junior like my eighth grade class president, he played trumpet. And then this other kid, um, Craig, he played trumpet. And so I um, I thought, well, look, you know what? My favorite band at the time was Chicago. I said, let's put together a Chicago cover band. And so I actually had a book. I got it from my the music store that was the complete scores of the Chicago stuff. Because when you're when you're playing in a band with trumpet player, two trumpet players and a trombone player, and even the keyboard player, they can those those people, you know, four of the seven people in this band could read music and I could read music, too. So that's five. And I I don't think Chris, the other guitar player, couldn't. The drummer didn't need to. Uh, but what we did was we learned um, we learned several Chicago tunes we had. But we learned we were we did um, the year end talent show. Um, we auditioned and, and got in. And of course, again, it was like. The band was uh, six ninth graders, and Dave, the drummer, was a an eighth grader. Excuse me. And um, we played. Um, this is the song we played. Uh, I don't think I'll get it. I don't think I'll get a takedown for this because I'm not going to play enough of it. Get your drinks ready. <laughs> chop that part out but if you didn't if that if youtube makes me chop that out then i will just say right now that we were playing 25 or 6 to 4 so um now uh so here so we we rehearsed we found some place to rehearse i think it was a uh, some church or something like that that had a big room we could use and of course all the moms had to drive us there and and we're rehearsing we audition and we get, we get the, we get the, not only do we get into the talent show, they give us the final slot. Uh, they give us the final slot in the talent show. And um, uh, we had to do it twice. We had two convocations. We did the whole talent, talent show once for the 
like the seventh graders and half of the eighth grade, eighth grade class. And then the second one in the afternoon was for the other half of the eighth grade class and then my class, the ninth grade class. So one other thing that we did was we, Chris and I were the guitar players and we didn't have a bass player. So basically Chris kind of played kind of bass and I played guitar and um, we, he had a little Epiphone amp and I had a little Fender Champ amp. And we thought, you know what, that's not, A, it's not loud enough and it's not very impressive. So we rented a Fender amp that was a, I think a eight by 10 cabinet. So a very big cabinet, very tall cabinet and a Fender basement. And we both plugged into that and um, we played, you know, we would play and it was bigger and it looked cooler. We, <laughs> well, we still had our little amps on stage with the lights on just so that it looked cool because we had a lot of amps on stage, but we weren't even using those. But we, we were the last act and, and the first time it, everything went as planned and it was the trombone player's job because he was the biggest kid in the band to bring out the big amp on stage because everything had to be off stage. The drums had to be brought out. The cur you know, curtain comes down, the drums get brought out, everybody, piano gets pulled out, the horn players get their music stands, all that. And then the trombone player was supposed to bring out the amp and he and put it in place and with the head up there and then we plug into that. And I'm going through my wah-wah pedal, okay? And um, uh, so I have a wah-wah pedal for the solo, uh, maybe a distortion box. I don't remember that. That's weird because I don't remember having a distortion box back then. So it may have just been, um, uh, yeah, the basement's a great amps. Um, it may have just been, it may have just been the wah pedal. Anyway, uh, so we, the, the first, the first one, of course, for the seventh graders who I didn't hardly know any of them and the eighth graders, uh, that one went fine. We did, we did good. And we were like rock stars and they screamed and everything. It felt great. We we're like, woohoo, you know, it was like this. You get this high. I've been in bands where, you know, after you play, the screaming was Beatles like level screaming where your ears are distorting because it's so loud. And it's like, oh, my gosh, so fun. Um, kind of why you do it in some ways. And um, so uh, sorry, take a drink, everyone. I touched my nose. I'm going to confess. So here I am in the band. I think we called the band Crosswind. Um, I think think that's what I don't you know I don't remember what the band was shoot I think it was Crosswind I'm not sure what the band was called now that I think about because this was our last gig <laughs> this this was it so they get to the second convocation and we you know we come out from the you know we bring all the stuff the curtain goes down we bring everything out and Dave the drummer counts off the song one two one two three four nothing the sound is not on or not not off it's there was nothing I, and i'm looking at my guitar and i had the blonde the blonde 330 135 that i had a couple days ago the my first electric that's the guitar i was playing and i'm like i'm, I'm looking at it and i'm like oh you know and we're chris and i both have no, no sound at all we plugged into the amp and i don't realize that chris doesn't have sound either i just know that i don't and it's like well that's really embarrassing first off and then uh, uh, and then I'm like, what, what the heck happened to the sound? You know, and I'm looking, I'm plugged into the amp. Everything's plugged in and the amps, the amps on the lights on and, and Dave's still playing and the horns are still playing. And then suddenly one of the horn players stops playing and says, the amps on fire, the amps on fire. <laughs> like what? And I look back and there's literally flames coming out of this amp that we rented for the show. Flames are coming out of the amp. The, the stage manager comes out with a with a uh, fire hydrant and sprays the amp down. Okay, and I think that my guitar is broken. That's why it's not working. So I start to cry. I'm like ninth grader. I'm like, what, how old am I? Fifteen years old. I start to cry in front of the entire ninth grade class, and I'm like, just run off with my guitar, thinking that my guitar is broken now. And we just got embarrassed and we didn't we couldn't finish the song. And what had happened was Dave, the trombone player, moved the amp. He forgot to plug the head into the cabinet. He had done it the convocation before, but when he did that, it created like this horrific thing. You know, unfortunately, this was kind of at the end of the school year. So I didn't have to go to school many more days after this, but I was like, 
you know, this was my one attempt to get popular and to be to like hang out with the popular kids. Well, now the next thing I do, my mom made me go to all her houses and collect 20 bucks from each of them to pay for the amp repair. <laughs> so we had to we had to do. I was like, oh, my gosh, that was like the worst. So that was I, you know, I go into high school and I, I knew that, you know, I wasn't even going to try anymore. That was it. I was done trying to be popular. And uh, and in high school, you know, I, I don't know how you are, but I pretty much found my tribe. I started hanging out with the musicians, um, you know, stopped trying to hang out with the popular kids necessarily, you know, more band geeks than anybody. Um, and I got I, my Jerry became my best friend in 10th grade. And he he carried me through high school. Jerry and I were like brothers um, and his parents were like my parents and my parents were like his parents. Um and uh, so we we just you know that got me through that got me through high school and then I, you know I'm from there to to Butler and so on and so forth. But anyway, that was uh, it was brutal and it's like just a horrible. I mean, maybe I'll tell you though. I actually have a story that's worse than that. Um, I, I do I do think that um, I have a pheromone that um, that attracts bullies. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that episode of The Simpsons where Lisa Simpson, who's a nerd, and all her friends are nerds, she, in the lab, isolates the pheromone that attracts bullies to nerds and makes, they can't help themselves, they have to, and I swear to God, I have that pheromone. Even today, I, you know, even to this day, there are people, in fact, oftentimes, uh, that pheromone comes out through my personality, and on YouTube, a lot of the dislikes are because they it's probably a bully that just, they can't help themselves. It's just that my personality completely rubs them the wrong way. And if we're, in, if we were in junior high, they would have punched me in the gut. But the only thing you could do is hit a thumbs down on the, on the video. So, uh, but, uh, uh, Oh gosh. Yeah. The, Rick, you're talking about doing the, yeah, I've gotten shocked many times from amps. Uh, lips, your lips are so sensitive. I've gone up to a microphone that was had the opposite grounding as the amp and put your lips on it. You get the crud shocked out of your lips. I've actually seen like sparks before fly. So um, anyway, that was my, that was my, and you know, the funny thing is I didn't, ugh. cheers. I didn't quit playing guitar because of that. It didn't, it didn't sour me to music. It actually drove me more into it. It almost was a fortuitous event rather than a traumatic one. I mean, I look back at it now and laugh. Um, I remember that there were girls that live across the street, sisters that live across the street, and they were they were teasing me because I cried. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's pretty lame to cry in ninth grade. I mean, it wasn't like I was second grade or something like that. But um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I have the kind of face that you want to slap. <laughs> exactly. But it's funny because because Lisa Simpson and what's interesting is Beth. So, I, you know, I don't know if there are just three types of people, <laughs> but there are three there. Here are three of the types of people in high school and junior high in particular. For some reason, it's really obvious in junior high. You got the bullies. You got the, the victims of the bullies, the nerds or whatever. Um, and like I said, I was short. I was the new kid. Um, I, like I said, I grew six inches after graduating high school. I was five, six my senior year and I was six feet like after one year of college. So it's like, why? Um, but yeah, <laughs> they don't like Kathy Bates. That's the problem. I remind them of Kathy Bates. Yes. That's, you know, I didn't know Kathy Bates played guitar. Yeah. If we, if this, if we go too much longer, my hair starts getting long enough and you know, it might actually, I might get that comparison again. Um, and then there's the third person, though, that's the defender against the bullies on behalf of the uh, the nerds. And that's what Beth is. She's a defender. And so it's interesting that I married a defender. And to this day, she'll get mad at people, like, you know, like if I'm in a, some kind of professional situation and someone's being a jerk to me, uh, it's uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, someone's being a jerk to me. She, she it just bothers her more than it bothers me. I'm kind of like ah, eh, you know, whatever. And she's like, oh man, that was that guy's a jerk, you know. So, but it's funny because that bully nerd pheromone thing still manifests itself in, um, uh, in, 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 in adulthood for me. 
Um, and I'm not hypersensitive to it. Like I said, I, I let things pretty much roll off my shoulders and I pretty much have a sense of humor about everything. And, um, but it's funny because for some reason there's a plethora of like the, the one job that seems to attract bullies is sound man. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because they can feel like they can boss everybody around, but I've worked with three sound men at two different churches that were literally bullies. And would just just loved tweaking me, like trying to get me mad or trying to make. I had one that would, one sound man would just turn off my monitors. I was leading worship at a church. All three of these were when I was leading worship. He would just turn off my monitor, monitors during the service so I couldn't hear myself, just because he wanted to mess with me. I'm like, why would he do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and my I remember my sister defended me one time. When I was a little kid, a neighbor um, threw a rock at me and hit me in the head and cut my head open with a rock. And my sister went over and beat the crap out of him, <laughs> my older sister. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just funny. I, I didn't I don't remember doing anything to deserve having a rock thrown at me. But, you know, we throw kids throw rocks and stuff. OK, Kathy, go. Oh, you have a lesson. OK, go. No, that's fine. I am. <laughs> thanks for the exclamation marks. Um, I'm actually done. We're done today. So tomorrow we're going to um, review this. And then we're going to add sevens to these chords. So the, we're going to do the same sheet. I'm going to uh, rewrite it out, though. Um, so I have one of each. And then we'll do this sheet with uh, seventh chords. And keep in mind, these are all movable. We're moving them around quite a bit. But uh, the seventh chord, same thing. So every time you learn a new bar chord or something, you've learned 12 chords. All right. Maybe uh, listen to a John, Pr John Prine song today. Uh, if you think about it, pray for my friend uh, Andrew Watt, who had uh, who's on the back end of coronavirus. And he's the guy that uh, produced Ozzy Osbourne's new record. Um, he produces um, he's really good friends and, and has worked a lot with uh, Post Malone. I know Post. Um, but he's written a bunch of songs and played on a, produced songs with Post. And he also has written songs for, you know, number one hits for, um, he's like 29 years old. He's just a kid. Um, but anyway, so I will talk to you later. And tomorrow I'll, I'll leave the chat up and I'll tell you what the total was. Um, right now we're at 36, but I maybe got to 45. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not keeping track, but I'll see you tomorrow. Lord willing. God bless. Bye-bye.